I, my pupils are very familiar with that expression because they hear me say it all the time. People seem to love playing on fingerboard. And I never really understand why, because the sound you get is far from desirable. If I would just play the open A string, it doesn't even really sound growly, squeaky, woolly. All of these things that you want to avoid. And there you can hear the difference when I bow purely between the bridge and the fingerboard. Imagine what happens when you start to actually use your fingers. That was only on an open A string. So if I play perhaps the third, nice and clean, as soon as I put it on the fingerboard. So you imagine a whole piece with that bow on the fingerboard. It's really not going to sound great. I don't want to listen to it and I'm sure that nobody either in your house wants to listen to it or anybody in the concert hall or the exam room or recital room or whatever it is, nobody wants to hear that. So we need to fix it and it's actually very easy to fix. Four little things to watch out for. The first is whenever you bow, what tends to happen when you get to the middle of the bow, you start bowing around the corner. That's what I call around the corner where you open out your shoulder and the bow just drifts then down the fingerboard. Obviously not as much as that, but <laughs> just to show you. So what you need to do, as soon as you get to the middle of the bow, just make sure that then you're opening out your from your elbow and not from your shoulder. Be careful you don't push forward with that bow because as soon as you start pushing forward with the bow, then your bow goes wonky and onto the fingerboard in a different area. So just as soon as you get to the middle of the bow, just be aware to keep the arm just traveling nicely at uh, a sort of diagonal line, really. So that's the first thing. The second thing is just basic. Either watch the bow in the mirror the whole time or watch your, the, yourself bowing. Now that's great if you know the piece or the scale, but if you're trying to learn something, you can't do both at the same time. You can't be watching your bow to check it's not disappearing on its holidays um, whilst you're learning all the notes. So what I tend to use is, well, it's quite a nifty little device, this, this little thing here. And purely what you do, you put it over the top of your bridge and fingerboard, and then you literally just bow through it. So obviously, as you can see, the bow can't go anywhere. It's just going through the hole. Obviously, the sound you make with it isn't going to be great, but you're not doing it at that precise moment to get a beautiful sound. You're doing it purely to keep the bow off the fingerboard. So, and the other thing about that that is maybe a little bit tricky is that you can't actually lift your bow off. So if you're playing, um, for example, the Barclay minor, as you see, there are loads of sort of lifting up of it. So once you lift it out of that little hole, you then can't get it back in. So it's great if you're just playing long phrases or long bits that just don't involve rests and retakes. But if you have something that does, then that's when it gets a little bit tricky. And that leads me on to the last suggestion I have, which actually for me is the most fun one of all, and I think my people as well, they like it too. And that is, a little impression of a mouse for want of anything else. So what we're going to do is put the bow behind the bridge. So actually, if I just take my mute off there, um, and then that will just maybe make it a little clearer from what I'm doing. Um, so you literally just do that. Put the bow behind the bridge. And there you have the squeaky mic. So what you need to do is Practice your piece. Obviously, you're not going to hear the intonation, but the main thing of this exercise, the main point is to bring the bow away from the fingerboard. So take the bar A minor again. <laughs> not very tuneful, but actually it's really good for bringing your arm back, which is actually we want to do, especially if you've got really long arms, it, it becomes very easy to play on your fingerboard, but it will just get your arm used to just coming a little nearer your body. And if you do that just a few times every day with all the other things, hopefully before too long, you should have lovely playing in the middle of the bridge and the fingerboard and not skating around, sounding woolly and out of tune and distorted on the fingerboard. I hope you have fun with it, thanks.